Hello, and welcome to a short educational video on cost effectiveness. My name is Alicia Sell, and I'm a health economics and outcomes researcher with Medtronic. And I'm happy to be here with you to discuss what a cost effectiveness analysis is and how it is used globally. Cost effectiveness analyses are used around the world to shape health policy and access to medical interventions. For example, pharmaceutical drugs and medical devices. In countries with a centralized health budget, like the United Kingdom and Australia, they have a long history of embedding cost effectiveness analyses into their decision-making process for new or novel medical interventions. So, what is a cost effectiveness analysis? Cost effectiveness is a methodology to evaluate which interventions provide the highest value for the cost associated. In a cost effectiveness analysis, the value of an intervention is measured using quality adjusted life years, also referred to as qualies which is a generic measure of disease burden that includes not just the quantity, but the quality of life lived following the intervention. For example, living an additional five years bedridden is not equivalent value to a patient who lives five additional years in excellent health. In a cost effectiveness analysis, the costs include not only the cost of the intervention of interest, but importantly, what happens later. Most cost effectiveness analyses take a lifetime horizon, meaning that the costs and effects of the interventions are modeled for the patient's entire life. Now, let's look at how a cost effectiveness analysis is developed. Cost effectiveness analysis compares the cost and effect of two interventions, usually the intervention of interest compared with the standard of care, and is summarized using an incremental cost effectiveness ratio, also known as an ISA. This ratio shows the incremental costs over incremental quality adjusted life years between the two comparators. The ISA can be plotted on the coordinate plane shown here, where the x-axis is the effectiveness of the intervention and the y-axis is the cost. If a new technology is more effective and less costly, it falls in the bottom right quadrant and a decision maker would choose this technology over the comparator. However, Many interventions fall in the top right quadrant as most technologies that are more effective tend to be associated with a higher cost. When the incremental cost effectiveness ratio falls beneath the willingness to pay threshold, it is deemed cost effective, meaning the associated cost and outcomes are considered good value compared to the alternative intervention. In countries with global budgets, a centralized agency determines the willingness to pay threshold. Here in the United States, it is up to the individual decision maker. For example, a relevant framework for US cost effectiveness analyses in the cardiovascular space is the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association guideline. This guideline proposes that an intervention with an ISA of less than $150,000 per quality gained to be cost effective, and an ISA of less than $50,000 per quality gained to be highly cost effective. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of cost effectiveness analysis. Our Medtronic Healthcare Economics team is happy to discuss cost effectiveness analysis for your specific therapies in more detail. Thank you.